What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for June 25th, 2023. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery, coming at you once again from the Cape May Studios deep in the basement of the Beach House uh, while everybody else is getting their coffee and eating, getting ready to eat breakfast. But hopefully the sound is good. Before we get started, quick housekeeping. Be sure to go check out the latest Back to the Future, lay out the ground rules, and unveil the brackets for the Philly Sports Most Lovable Loser Tournament, which will start in less than a week on Saturday. We'll do the matchups here on this day in Philly Sports history. Just need you guys to vote. Tell everybody you can. I'm going to post everything starting tomorrow, the brackets on my social media, so be on the lookout for that. But go check out the episode for the rules. Uh, Back to the Future with a PH. Be sure to like and subscribe. Spread the word. All of that good stuff to help the algorithm out. And we we should have a good time. It'll be a lot of fun here in July trying to figure out who our most lovable sports teams losers are. All right. Quick Phillies update. Lost 4-2. It's never good to lose a division game, especially to the Mets. However, Scherzer was vintage uh, Scherzer, which... Not much you can do about it. He is a Hall of Famer. He, I, It's one of those guys who's been a pain in our ass for years. Uh, so it's one of those no harm, no foul type deals. Um, not Again, not good, but they have still have a chance to come out and take that series today. Um, hopefully they, they can get it done. The big takeaway for me, though, was Christopher Sanchez uh, looked like he could have he could have solidified that fifth starter role. Uh, I know Rob Thompson said he's going to be the starter the next time that his spot comes in the rotation. If we can get a guy in there consistently, I think it's going to do wonders for the bullpens. They're not going to blow the leads or be tired. And all of the things that have been haunting this team over the past few weeks, even though they've been hot, I think what that will do is just shore that up and, and give consistency to everybody. So, Hopefully Christopher Sanchez can slide into that fifth starter role and, and take this <clears throat> excuse me take the pressure off the bullpen. There have been a lot of trade rumors. I don't really want to address them yet because we're still still about a month <clears throat> excuse me from getting into the end of this uh, like the trade season. Uh, but it's worth noting, like, the Paul Goldschmidt one isn't going away, and, and it, there's more and more people reporting that. So I don't know what they have going on. I don't know how that would factor into Bryce Harper playing first base. So there's a lot of a lot of moving pieces with that. So we shall see. All right, Union update. 4-1 to one over Inter-Miami. They, they seem to be peaking right now at the right time, playing very well. Hopefully they, that'll continue throughout the summer. I still would like to get down to a, to a Union game. I hear they're they're definitely a good time. Uh, not really much news on the Flyers front, other than there, there's still rumors. And ultimately, it comes down to I think Danny Briere basically said we're open for business. So if you 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 got a trade you want to propose, hit me up, uh, which I think is good. And then the Sixers. Uh, there's not really much. I know there's going to be more, but I think uh, the biggest story now is there's some GMs that are saying that Daryl Morey's not in doing trade talks about Tobias Harris in good faith. He's asking too much, a ridiculous amount. And I, I kind of look at it like this, and I've said this a couple times already. You, you can't, you have to have a high price for him because you don't know what Harden's going to do. They're going to keep Tobias if Harden doesn't come back. So I think until we get a, a good, firm decision on him, that's where, where we'll be. Um, I know we have uh, a lot of time left, so we'll, we'll see what happens. But it should be an interesting week. Um, but if you want to get ready for Sixers free agency, go to phillygoat.com. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery for all your Sixers needs. Uh, th- they got a wide selection, so be sure to, to check them out. If Sixers aren't your thing, they have everybody else too. So Phillies, uh, Flyers, Union even, they're, they're doing hot. Philly neighborhood, we're still in Pride Month. Get your Philly Pride shirts. Anything you want on their list, uh, use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off of your order. 
All right, today we're going to go back to 1992 and one of the saddest days, I think, of my childhood. Um, on this day, June 25th, 1992, Jerome Brown passed away in a car accident with his 13-year-old nephew. Uh, Reggie White announced the, uh, the death at a uh, Billy Graham, I think it was, thing at the vet, wiping away tears and just really, just sad. I mean... I remember waking up, my dad giving me the uh, the newspaper and hearing it on Sports Center, and just being so upset about it. And I just met him. I told that story on here a lot of times. I met him just a few months prior to that, um, and just kind of trying to process as a 12, 13 year old, process death, process one of my heroes dying. My grandfather had died like the year before, so it was just a tough time for me. And I just remember being extremely, extremely upset about it. Uh, my parents knew like they were waiting there with the paper and, and are you okay? Do you want to talk about things? Um, but Jerome Brown, as a player, was one of the best, 87 through 91 with the Eagles, two-time All-Pro, two-time Pro Bowler. He's on the Eagles' 75th anniversary team. He is in the Eagles Hall of Fame. His number 99 is retired. Um, I just, at 76 games, he had 29 and a half sacks, three interceptions. I mean, that's that next season, they had to bring it home for Jerome, and it took them until 2017 to finally bring it home, but... Just one of the saddest days. So on this day, back in 1992, Jerome Brown did pass away in a car accident. All right, Rivalry Month, and in honor of Jerome, one of his biggest rivals, the Arizona Cardinals. This is an old, old-school rivalry. Uh, it goes back to when the Cardinals were in Chicago, then St. Louis, Phoenix, Arizona. The Cardinals actually lead all-time 60, 57, and 5 uh, they have played three times in the postseason, uh, the 1947 NFL Championship, which the Cardinals won. The Eagles got the revenge a year later in 1948, winning the championship. And then that memorable 2008 NFC Championship game, which Kurt Warner and the Cardinals did win. And I feel like as a kid, the, the Eagles always seem to lose to the Cardinals once a year. Um, and it's especially once they moved to Arizona. Um, and it, it just was weird to me that the, the Cardinals would always beat the Eagles one time per year. Um, there is the connection that the Eagles did almost move to Arizona. In fact, they were, it was a practically a done deal. Um, but because they didn't, the Cardinals ended up moving there. If I had to give this a rating, I would say three out of five um, and just a solid rivalry, uh, mainly because it's annoying. It's, they're still in my top five probably hated teams because of that rivalry. Uh, but today's rival, the Arizona Cardinals, will give it a three out of five. On this day, back in 1992, JB passed away. Um, just a sad day, like I said. Just I remember it vividly waking up and my dad worked the midnight shift, had the newspaper waiting for me, and just was like, what do you need? Do you need?" And, like, I remember crying. Like, it was it was a tough one to deal with, and I think making it harder was, like, the fact that my grandfather had just passed away, and I had just seen him a couple days or a couple months prior to that. Uh, but rest in peace, Jerome. We finally did bring it home for you in 99. Phil's looking to win the series today against the Mets. Be sure to go to phillygoat.com. Use that promo code Jim Montgomery. It's going to be a hot one today. Stay cool. Go have yourselves a Sunday. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm Jim Montgomery. Until next time, I will see you when I see you.